Hi everyone, it's Raylene from RTO Doctor and I'm going to try this again and hopefully the internet connection will be a little bit more stable, although I'm already getting a connection is weak signal. Uh, we'll try and persevere and make this as quick as possible then before we get disconnected yet again. Uh, tonight's post is about the importance of perception and the impact that it can have on your education training operation. And it's in the context of me completing a, what I think now was a four-day audit, a four-day ASQA audit, and uh, also in the context of a LinkedIn post that I wrote back on the 4th of May 2016 called The Paradox and Power of Perception. So just quickly, I'd, I'd like you to, to think about how what you say and do can be perceived by others. And, and in this particular case, what we're talking about is regulatory authorities, in particular um, their delegates and authorised officers uh, in, in terms of auditors. Um, but when we, when we receive information or communication, we always understand or interpret that information based on our own internal and external views of reality. So the reality of the person receiving that information may actually be different from the reality of the person who's communicating that information. And the, different in, the difference in perception could actually be quite significant in, in terms of one person's experience of, of a certain matter, uh, different people's expectations around what uh, the the giver and the receiver of the information wish to to share in terms of knowledge, their their different cultural backgrounds, the the environment, the context for the giving and receiving of, of information can also create a perception of the information that's being given and the information that's being received. Um, the motivation behind giving the information and the motivation behind receiving the information could be completely different. Um, if your motivation is to provide something in good faith and, and to try and rectify or demonstrate a continuous improvement and the motivation of the other party is inconsistent or not aligned with your own motivation, then there is the possibility that that perception could be uh, tainted either positive or positively or negatively. Um, also body language and behaviour. Um, how often have you uh, received information or communication from somebody and what they say and what they do are not aligned with each other and the person's behaviour and actions and, and body language don't, uh, they're, they're inconsistent with, with what they say and do. There's no integrity behind uh, what's being said and done and therefore you can't necessarily rely on, on the message that Ah, we're back. Only momentarily, though, the connection's weak again. So I might leave it at that for tonight's 30 Days 30 Tips. And I would just ask you to consider the impact of the message that you're giving and the message that you're receiving and how a perception can be generated by either yourself or from yourself uh, about the information that you're giving and receiving and how important that perception can be in terms of the regulatory environment that you're operating in as an education and training op operator. So, for example, if the perception that you're creating is being understood differently Ah, so quickly before I lose you again, make sure that your communication message, behaviour, body language and everything about what it is that you're trying to communicate is aligned with the message that you're wanting to portray and that the message that you are receiving is consistent with the giver's intention, motivations, context and everything else. If you have any questions, I'll post the LinkedIn article with this uh, video. So hopefully you'll be able to get a better understanding from the LinkedIn video uh, post than this video, which has been all over the place. I apologise for the connection.